Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session of Canadian Open Data Summit 2021. Uh, my name is Laura, and I'm going to be speaking with you along with my colleagues Byron Chu and Michael Lamru about engaging youth through community partnerships, code, and data literacy through our Callisto project. If you'd like to access the slides, you can visit tinyurl.com forward slash COTS 2021 COTS Callisto. When you press this link, you'll be redirected to the Callisto Hub, which is a service provided by our program that allows you to interact with Jupyter Notebooks and the Python programming language. All you need to do is authenticate with either Google or Microsoft and enjoy the slideshow. I'll, I would like to start first off by acknowledging the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. From all the corners of this country, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the indigenous people that call this land home. While we meet here today on a virtual platform, we take a moment to acknowledge the importance of reconciliation and collaboration. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and our responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improve our own understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Callisto program. Uh, so what we do through the Callisto program is we provide open educational infrastructure and learning resources. Uh, the focus for the Callisto program is to use computational thinking and data science, data literacy tools, and to make this process as easy and as available as possible. The main platform we use are Jupyter Notebooks. And through these Jupyter Notebooks, what we do is we explore Python coding and we connect coding and data science to the K through 12 curriculum. In addition to providing material, we also provide teacher and student training workshops. The Callisto project is brought forward as a partnership between Siberia and the Pacific Institute for the Mathematical Sciences with funding from the CanCode program. So I did mention the word Jupyter Notebook in my previous slide. And so if you haven't had a chance to work with this, this tool before, you can think of this as an online document that includes both text and Python code in different cells or parts of the document. These documents run on a Callisto Hub, as well as Google Colab, IBM Watson Studio, and other places. And as a fun fact, this presentation is a Jupyter Notebook. One of the notebooks that our Callisto program worked on uh, involved a partnership with the Tla'ama Nation and the Sunshine Coast. And the goal of this project was to use mathematics, coding, and data science to understand how fish traps work. Fish traps are intertidal modification zones. Typically, they are built uh, using rocks or uh, wood. And the idea is these modifications work such that when the tide goes up, uh, fish can swim into this, this area right here. Uh, when the tide goes down, any fish that, do, that don't go over the, the rock wall then becomes trapped. So we wanted to use some Python programming language and some code to understand uh, tide behaviors, fish dynamics, and population dynamics in this, these fish traps. Uh, we picked a specific kind of trap called the crescent element, which has the shape of a semicircle or sometimes a full circle. Uh, we can see in the simulation, the red dots represent the fish. The black dots represent fish swimming inside the trap that are trapped. So whenever the water goes up above the sea level, we can see fish swimming up and down. As soon as the tide goes down uh, and then they become entrapped by the rocks, then fish can become captured. So we did use both the Python programming language and Jupyter Notebooks to showcase uh, this phenomenon. So what we've done is we have created a notebook that I'm going to very quickly demo. Okay, open up again. And within this Jupyter Notebook, uh, we have, so this is the Callisto Hub. This is a place where I would interact with Jupyter Notebooks. We created a document that has a video produced by the examination on the tradition of fish traps. We have information about the crescent element. We have some background uh, or motivating concepts regarding how we're going to use math to model the fish traps. And then in here, we have some Python code. And so for this particular Python script, what we're doing is we are downloading data from Oceans and Fisheries Canada that contains uh, real data on the tide. So through this Python script, we can extract the data and then we can visualize the data using tools such as Plotly. 
So we've picked a location near Powell River where the Tla'am Nation resides. And then from here with the Jupyter Notebooks, we can interact with the data via the form of a visualization. One of the first questions we ask students includes, what is the pattern and the tide behavior? Can you tell us where the maximum uh, height was, the minimum, and what time of the day those, those highs or lows were reached? And furthermore, we can interact with the code to simulate a fish trap trapping fish. So if I were to plot my 3D beach model, I could go ahead and play with my parameters. And then I can go back and forth between the widget and observe that if I make the trap have a smaller radius and the trap is not so good anymore at trapping the fish, if I make the trap bigger or wider, it has more of an opportunity for the water to cover it. So the trap is more successful at capturing fish. All of these notebooks are provided uh, at no cost under a Creative Commons license and are available in our Callisto website. So next, I'm going to pass it over to Professor Michael Lamoureux, who's going to be talking to you about our weekly data visualizations. Thanks, Laura. Um, so this next section, I want to talk a bit about some other resources we have available at Callisto. So here I'm at the Callisto webpage, callisto.ca. So you can go there and see all the resources that we have set up there. The resources are set up in a way that makes it easy to use for teachers and students. We have a number of learning modules, lesson plans, Indigenous content, data visualization exercises, computational thinking problems, and troubleshooting. I wanted to show a bit about the data visualization exercises because that connects well with um, the Open Data Summit's goals of using and accessing open data. So again, this is set up in a way that's easy for teachers and students to use. So you can look through some of the different projects. So for instance, something about major league pitchers and pitch types construction times in the age of empires, Twitch popularity for gamers. So you can see some of the things are targeted at students and what they might be interested in. I wanted to do a particular example that is kind of relevant right now about um, our production of carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. You simply click on this item and it opens up to a web page that informs the teachers and students about a project on some data that you can collect on carbon dioxide. So one of the questions is, how much does Canada uh, produce carbon dioxide and how do those emissions compare to other G7 countries? So this uh, document lays out a whole procedure about how to get the data and how to display the data. Um, this document is quite short. The idea is to get the students get a taste of how to access data and see some information about data. The data is coming from the World Bank open data set. So this is a good place to get open data about all sorts of different things. Here's um, a plot that we generated using that data, as well as um, uh, the gross domestic product. No, no, the populations of each of these countries. So this red line is the United States. They're at the top in terms of um, carbon dioxide emissions out of the G7 per capita. At the bottom, this little green line you see is France. And you might notice that this graph, it's a plotly graph, is interactive, and so you can actually move things around quite a bit. Now, this is just to give the teachers and the students a taste of what you can do with open data. But the idea behind Callisto is to teach people how to use open data, how to use programming, such as Python programming, to access the data. So we have a link here, this walkthrough, that actually launches a Jupyter Notebook. It'll want, go to the Callisto Hub. It'll load up a notebook. And here we have the notebook and it comes with instructions. So this is a Jupyter notebook. You probably have seen them before, but the basic idea is it combines computer code, text and graphics. So you can get some very interesting information about this particular project. Um, in order to display the graphs, I should run this. So I can go to the kernel to restart and run all. This will run the code for me. It's running Python 3. When this dot is black, it means the code is running. When it turns white, it means it's done. And so you can look through, and now you see it's populated with uh, various charts. OK, so this document goes more into detail about how we got the data and where it comes from. If you go back to the top, you can see some of the Python code that grabs the data. So this is World Bank data. Um, this code here goes to the World Bank data and grabs a bunch of data about the seven G7 countries, so Canada, Great Britain, US, France, Italy, Germany, and 
Well, I put China in here because I was playing around with this code earlier on. Should be Japan because Japan is in the G7, but China is not. So maybe I'll. But what's nice about this is you can actually change the code yourself and then update all the information. And that's what we like for the students is because they don't have to know a lot about programming. They can just modify someone else's code and get some information about uh, the total emissions. So when you look at total emissions here, you see United States is much higher than everyone else. But part of the reason for that is um, the United States just has a very large population. We can go on to other um, measures. So this is CO2 emission per, um, per US dollar. So it's basically measuring the size of the economy versus the amount of CO2. And you actually see that a lot of these numbers are going down. That has a lot to do with the fact that the economies are growing in the countries as well. Um, even though carbon dioxide is increasing, the economy is growing faster. So that's why these slants come down. And you can get information about CO2 emissions per capita. Um, again, you can modify the code. You can talk to the students and help them communicate on it. Uh, one thing I like doing was um, you can do some experiments. Like you might say, what's China doing? Okay, China's in the news. The abbreviation for China is CHN. If I go through and modify my pictures, um, you can see if you look at the CO2 emissions, here's China. So China used to be a very small CO2 emitter, and then things blew up around year 2000. And again, you can continue to get uh, other information about um, the emission per gross domestic product, uh, emissions per capita, and so on. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you. Um, again, this is one of the Callisto resources. There's a bunch of these um, data visualizations for all sorts of things about holidays, about memes that students see, and so on. A uh, good resource to get to and access um, information. I'll stop there and I'll let Byron take on the next section of the presentation. Thank you, Michael. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a couple of other resources we have on our website. One is called courses.callisto.ca, which is our online courses. These are self-directed courses, which are instructor led. Um, and you can go at your own pace and learn more about computational thinking and data science. The second resource I'm gonna tell you about is our student hackathons, um, which is something we've run both in person when we could do those events and also virtually during the start of the pandemic in 2020. So the first uh, resource I'm gonna tell you about is the online courses. So if you go to courses.callisto.ca, it'll take you to our website. This is an open edX platform. It's an open source platform that we're hosting our courses on. And we have two courses that we've developed, uh, the data science course and Callisto and computational thinking. If I take a look at the data science course, you'll see a bit of an outline and it talks about things are like, what, what is data science? Um, dives into what is data and some of the data fundamentals associated with that. Then we get into the more the computational side of things. So using Python for data science. And of course, everyone likes pretty visualization. So how do we use Python, Jupyter Notebooks to create really nice data visualizations? And that's actually where I'm gonna take you as well uh, for this presentation. So if I go to module four, you'll see in this module, um, you're gonna learn different types of data visualizations, how to create data visualizations using code, uh, employ data visualization design best practices, and also access additional resources. So this module in particular, I think is very relevant to this crowd today because it's utilizing an open data source and it's the Vancouver open data source. So we talk about what is visualization and common types of visualization. So we get into this and we scroll through the different types of plots, line charts, pie charts, box plots. So a lot of different information we provide to you about um, data visualizations. And one of the main examples that we feature is this data source from the Vancouver City of Vancouver Open Data Portal, and it's on public art. So we allow people to dive into this data set. So you can obviously dive into it uh, through the website, but we also want 
people to be able to access it programmatically through Jupyter Notebook. So this notebook um, shown here is called Exploring Vancouver, British Columbia Open Data. And so this gets launched from our online course and you get taken into our portal, portal and you can see that we programmatically access um, the Vancouver Open Data source via an API. And once we bring it in, we can grab records of the data. So if you look here, the record timestamp, the most recent timestamp is 2021-08-30. And so today is August 31st. And so this was an updated data set from yesterday. So it's really neat. Every time you go to this data set, you're going to get updated data. And what we do through here is actually we start to visualize the data around in place uh, public art and remove public art. And we get a count of them. And if it, you actually compare this to what the screenshots we have on our online course, you'll see that these numbers have changed, obviously, because we're using live data. And so now you can make plots using matplotlib, such as static plots, such as you know um, a histogram of uh, in place versus removed. Um, and you can represent that in different ways, such as pie charts and histograms and scatter plots. And I like this one in particular, because we plot the year on the y-axis, which is a little bit differently. And then we do the type of art installation on the x-axis. And if you notice, for the sculptures and also the site integrated works, there's quite a bit of dots around the year 2020. So uh, the frequency of these types of art installations have increased. So maybe that's something you learn from the data and you may want to ask um, the city of Vancouver about. Um, as well, there's many other plots that we have here. And we also use interactive graphs as well. So you can see the values and interact with them. And what's really nice as well about Plotly is you can create these multiple panel plots as well. So we have you know, a bit of a scatter plot as the main plot, then we have a histogram on top, and we also have box plots as well, which demonstrates sort of the statistical side of things. And finally, um, we also have maps as well. So you can actually take that open data that was you know, taken or uh, from the Vancouver Open Data Portal and create interactive maps that allow you to actually dive in into the location of interest and you know, identify some local art that might be in your neighborhood. So this is one example of how we leverage open data in our online course. And really the whole goal of the online course and you know, a larger goal for the Callisto program is to really develop data literacy and data science skills and digital literacy skills for students. Because we think you know, we live in this giant world of data. We want to empower students to really be comfortable in interacting with data um, and making their own stories and diving into the data and understanding you know, what information is in the data and creating their own stories from that. Another resource we provide to students and teachers is student hackathons. So student hackathons are these multi-day events that we lead with teachers and students, and they're, they're tiered so that you can have uh, students who are less experienced and students who are more experienced using these tools. And I'll show you an example of a guided lesson that we do for people who may not be completely comfortable with using you know, Python code or Jupyter Notebooks. And so this is an example of something called best friends in space. And we look at pet adoption using, again, an open data source. So in this case, we teach them how to run a cell. And when you run a cell, you get to put in your name. And you get to get a little bit of a challenge. So this first challenge is try adding a dot plot to the end of the following command. So dot plot. And if I make a mistake, it asks me to make sure I'm doing it correct. So I'm going to do dot plot. And in this case, um, it's going to take our pet adoption data and plot it with a nice little line graph um, showing the weight of the dogs and the time to adoption of the dogs and all these other different um, variables that we have in the data set. So this is another example of how we have, um, we use Jupyter Notebooks, open data to kind of develop you know, data literacy and data science skills in students at a young age. And there's a series of seven notebooks, seven guided notebooks in the guided hackathon challenge. And then for the more advanced or more experienced students, they can actually take an independent, almost statistics type project and actually take their own data source and develop their own Jupyter notebook on that and, and pass it on to the teacher at the end for assessment. So those are a couple of examples that we have. And if you want more information about these, obviously our best resource is our website. So please visit us at callisto.ca. You can also follow us at uh, callisto underscore 
Canada. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn. And of course, if you have any questions or you're interested in maybe having us you know, lead a hackathon at your school or lead a teacher training event or a student training event, um, please email us at contact at callisto.ca. Thanks. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.